welcome back to the channel everybody. I hope you are ready for some ultimate outdoor adventure because we're going on it. Today's focus is reviewing my bow, my new bow that I am taking elk hunting, but there's a entire series that is going to be going along with this from preparing, studying, getting ready to go after uh, elk with a bow for the first time, and then we're just gonna be living in the woods doing outdoor things, camping, fishing, just cooking up stuff in the good old outdoors. It's gonna be amazing going to the great state. I call it Texas's uh, colder, more mountainous cousin, Colorado. And we're gonna be going up there in the truck uh, solo and trying to go after uh, these majestic uh, protein-filled ungulate species known as the Rocky Mountain Elk. My focus for this is for anyone that is wanting to get into this for the first time, you can follow me. I'm doing it for the first time, learning from others, asking questions, soaking it in. I'm asking the dumb questions, you know, things that if you've never done it before, you would probably ask, you know, the kid in class that doesn't know what's going on. You're kind of scared, but you just raise your hand anyway because you don't know what's going on and just makes you feel more comfortable. I'm asking all those questions. I'm sure some of you are experts and there's a lot of knowledge there, but there's many of you that maybe Maybe you don't want to do this. Maybe you're like on the edge thinking about it. Maybe you're not into to hunting that seriously, um, but it's going to be fun to tag along just for the outdoor adventure. If you do want to do it, tag along. We're going to have a good time and I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process of going from me personally being a whitetail hunter, uh, growing up hunting the southern states, sitting in trees, sitting in blinds, to stalking out in the woods um, during this time of year that is called archery season for elk and the things you have to know, getting your licenses and knowing units and studying maps and everything like that, that I have found a lot different than just your general whitetail hunting. Let's go check out this brand new bow. Um, basically what we're gonna do today is um, kind of tweak it. I've, I've been uh, shooting it, I've had it over a week now, just kind of dialing it in, getting getting practice with it, getting comfortable, just making a few tweaks today. That's something that you need to do beforehand, uh, but I thought this would be a, a good opportunity, since I did get a new bow in the last week, uh, to just go ahead, review it, show you guys how I've got it set up for uh, elk hunting, and then just go over everything I like about it, and if there's anything I don't like about it. So, let's go check out my new bow. So this, is my new bow. This is made by Bowtech. This is the Realm SS model, and it's a it's a really smooth bow. So why did I want another bow? Well, it's kind of like fishing rods. You know, you can you can have that 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 one rod, and it, it does okay uh, at most things or some things. Really, some things. It's kind of like a tool. If you can uh, have another. Uh, fishing rod that you can adjust to what you are specifically wanting to do, whether it's like a crankbait rod or a uh, you know a flipping rod, your frogging rod. It's going to be a lot easier to complete that task and just saves you a lot of time. That's really what I want. Eventually, I'd like to have uh, plenty of bows, not quite as many as fishing rods, but just enough where I can have one set up for whitetail tree hunting. Um, and this one is going to be dialed in for western style hunting or longer range hunting. This is one of their shorter bows, compound bows that they offer and I think it is either 32 or 33 inches from cam to cam and all that means is it's just a little squattier, a little bit more compact so when you're walking through you know trees and limbs and everything like that it's, it's easier uh, to get around with. It's one of the things that I learned from my buddy JT when we were in New Zealand when he brought his bow. Uh, he had a little bit longer bow. I think it was 35 inches. Kept getting caught on limbs and things like that. So just a little squattier, a little bit more compact. You know, I'm not I'm not Cameron Haynes or anything. I'm not trying to pull back a lot of weight and shoot 100 yards. I want something that's really smooth and it's comfortable for me. I bumped the poundage up a little bit on this just because it felt smoother for me. My last bow, I was shooting 62 pounds. This one's 65, but it actually feels a little bit easier and it's an 85% let off. So what that means is when I pull this bow back all the way and I have to hold it right here, I'm gonna be more comfortable holding this, this bow for a longer period of time, that 85% let off. And I think legally you can have up to 90 um, for hunting elk. 
in the state of Colorado. This has 85, so we're good there. And as far as the uh, accessories go, I've got a spot hog sight. I've had another spot hog sight on my on my other bow that I dialed out, which I, I really like their sights. They're just they're built really tough. Um, you know, you can drag them through the trees and mud and everything. So I want to step further. So I didn't get a, a a nicer model. I just got one of their standard, you know, non-adjustable models, meaning it doesn't doesn't have a dial out ring where I have to you know, range, they go, okay, that animal's at 65 yards, my last pin's at 40, let me adjust to 65 yards. I got a five pin sight, and what I'm doing, what I'm in the process of doing right now is dialing in each pin to um, 30 yards, which is my shortest. 30 is my shortest here, and then it goes 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And if I need to make a shot beyond that, I'm practicing on the target to see where my 70 pin is going to hit. Like I can pretty much just take my 70 pin, put it on the animal's the top of its back, like on its spine, and then I'm going to be able to to hit the vitals. So that takes some practice, some knowledge, but the idea is I don't have to range and then adjust here. If you guys remember in Africa, that's a big reason why I I didn't. I lost the opportunity at a 65-yard shot on an animal because of that. I was taking way too long to sit there and dial. When you're in the heat of the moment, your adrenaline's going. Um, I just I like this system for stalking and making longer shots. On my rest, I decided to go with uh, it's a trophy taker smackdown rest. I really like the way the arrows load into here. It's very easy, and I went into an archery shop. If you're gonna do this, get a bow set up, make sure to go to an archery shop that's, um, that really knows what they're talking about. I, I go to this place called Cinnamon Creek up here in the DFW area. They, they pretty much set me up, uh, put all of my accessories on here. Uh, they help me paper tune the bow, which means making sure that the arrow is flying uh, straight. It's kind of weird, but arrows do some funky stuff in the air and you really want your arrow to shoot through a piece of paper and make a small hole and if it's tearing to the sides you know that your arrow is kind of making weird angles basically if you take it to an archery shop they'll help you they'll walk you through that process and I've also got a new friend uh, by the name of Jeremy Starks uh, he is one of the owners of Bass Mafia I've fished with him a couple times he's an incredible fisherman uh, but he's an even more passionate bow hunter and a wildlife biologist. He's just full of knowledge and he actually helped me get this Bowtech bow. Uh, he helped me out with that and picking out some of the uh, accessories he thought were compatible uh, for, for elk hunting, including this rest. This is the rest that he uses, really likes. And uh, one of the features I also like about this bow is on the, the top cam right here. There's a comfort setting and then there's a strength or power setting. And basically all you got to do is flip that over. One thing I do like on these Bowtex is um, you can make those little adjustments. Everything just seems easy to adjust. I have it on the comfort setting because it's just smooth. Like it's super smooth. That's what that SS stands for, I think. If you bump it up, you can get more feet per second. Makes your arrow go faster. But it's harder to pull back and it's a little stiffer at the end. And if you've never pulled back on an animal, like... When your adrenaline gets going, it sometimes can be really hard to pull back a bow because you're you're trying not to distract the animal. You don't want the animal to look at you. You don't want to make any noise at all. To be able to just do everything very smoothly is really important. That's what I practice when I'm pulling back a bow every time. I don't just yank it back there and, and get it back. I'm doing this thinking there's an animal there. How can I do this smoothly? Working those little muscles so it just becomes muscle memory when it's time to pull back. That is the bow. Um, I've just got my stinger stabilizer on here. Nothing special. Don't have a back bar. There's really nothing else on the bow. Nothing crazy. You know, I've got my quiver, my quiver mount right here that I'll put on there, but that's really it. I, you know, I made sure to uh, put a little money in, in my sight and the rest is... I've actually got to make an adjustment right now. I'm shooting a little left on the top pin so to do that, you need an Allen wrench to make all these adjustments. Let me show you guys how, how to work these. If you're gonna get one of these 
sights. So in order to move these pins right here, you can move all these individually up and down and in and out. So all of those adjustments are right here on the site. So you take your Allen wrench and you move these these little uh, these little screws in and out together to get them to go up and down. And then if you want them to go in and out, there's another set of screws right in here. The way that you sight in a bow is you want to follow your arrow. If you're shooting to the left of the target, you want to move that pin to the left. I've already done the, the general adjustments on here, which is you know your windage and elevation adjustments to get those right, those big bulky screws to move the entire sight. All I'm doing at this point is just tweaking it a little bit, consistently shooting. I'll take a break, I'll come back, see, oh, I'm consistently shooting right, a little high, tiny bit left, and then I'll just make little micro adjustments. By the way, the arrows I'm shooting, these are gold tip 340s in the Hunter XT series. And when I'm trying to sight in my bow, I'm usually shooting in just groups of three to make sure, not just shooting once and then adjusting, because you could be off a little bit. I want to get just a consistent little group going. Okay, so this was my first shot right here, which I shot a little low, but I was still going on the left side of the target there, so I made a little adjustment. I might have over adjusted just my last two shots. It's just like two inches to the right. You want to you wanna get your bow dialed into the center, obviously, but if I'm going to have it lean anywhere and be comfortable with it, it's I like it to be on this this side of the target because if I get a little bit of target panic and I pull just a little bit um, I want it to be over here just because I'm aiming more towards vitals if I hit shoulder you know elk's a different story but I definitely don't want to gut shoot the animal just adjusted back a hair and I think we're done with that pen I think it is it is dialed I had my first shot was a little low that was me and then our other two are in the bull. Keep in mind, this is my this is my shortest pin. This is 30, so I also need to make sure, I just need to shoot at 20 a little bit and just see where that, when I'm putting that 30 on, where it's gonna be. I'm just gonna have to know in my head, like if I've got a 20 yard shot, you know, just, just aim a little, a little bit lower. Aim like right there and it should be fine. Okay, let's dial in 40, shall we? So the one thing I've noticed is I'm getting a little older. It's harder to see through this five pin. That's why a lot of people don't like five pins. It's because your pins are so close together, but it's just so fast. Like once you get comfortable with it, especially if you repetitively know, you know yardages really quick, you can just pull back and get a shot off really fast. Sometimes you only have a few seconds to make a shot. So that's what we're going for here. We're going to see an animal, stock up on it and get a shot off quickly. Gosh, that is juicy. Learned a lot, honestly, recently from uh, from Jeremy, um, Jeremy Starks. He does he does this thing called Whitetail 101 um, on his Instagram. I'll, I'll link him down below if you guys are wanting to learn more about whitetail and just you know wildlife biology. And now's a good time to be studying, honestly, because deer season's about to be here. But anyway, he's taught me a lot about shooting as well. What you want to do is you want to pull it back. Like what your body wants to do is pull it back and then aim and once it gets on there you just hit it real quick while your arm is in the right position but that's not really the best way to get the the most accurate shot you want to hold as firm as you can and then let the bow surprise you and then just follow through kind of and then that's that's how you're going to get your most accurate shots consistently so that second shot that i did i kind of kind of pulled it i knew i didn't have a good shot, but the third one felt nice, smooth, and it's right on the money. So, 40 dialed. Feeling good about it, y'all. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a break, 
and I really can't shoot past 45, 50 yards in in my yard right here. I just have it just turns into trees. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Guggen HQ. Uh, my boy Lunkers TV. He set up a bunch of archery targets up there, and I can go shoot at any range that I want. Um, it's also important just to take some breaks, let your muscles recoup. If you just keep hammering, not to use a Cameron Haynes terms, but you just keep going while you're shooting, um, you know, you'll have some fatigue that happens and you might be dialing in your bow to when you're fatigued and it's off and it can be frustrating. So it's good to take breaks. It's good to have plenty of time to do this. Give yourself a, at least a week to get comfortable with your bow and shoot it. Ideally, you wanna have a bow for many months and shoot it a lot every day. But Jeremy and the folks at Bowtech, they were able to get me this bow kind of last minute, last minute thing to go on my elk hunt. I wanna thank them for doing that. And I'm trying to do my best to get comfortable with it. And uh, there's really not a whole lot I don't like about it so far. So we'll dial in the rest, take a little break, and then finish out at 70. And then our bow is going to be ready to take up to go elk hunting. Just checking in here at the archery shop up here at Cinnamon Creek. One thing I wanted to check before I left was my axes. So they have a special level they can put your bow on that checks your all your axes. So that's kind of your hand, uh, you know, if you think about moving the bow around, you want it to be centered on all axes and balanced, and it is. The timing of the bow is really good. They got my peep just right. So after you shoot a bow, you know, a hundred times, few hundred times, the string's gonna stretch, things like that. So everything's dialed in. Put a little twist uh, in the string as well, just to, tighten it uh, back up a little bit. I'm probably not gonna touch it, like make any Allen wrench screw adjustments. Um, I hope not. I wanna be done. I wanna just shoot it after that and have that confidence. So we'll get all this stuff out of the way and we'll be ready to just feel, be the arrow, fly straight, penetrate and make protein. Okie dokie y'all, we are up here at Guggen HQ. We're gonna finish dialing in are uh, 40, 50, 60, and 70. It's raining right now, uh, so we're inside, we're indoors here, which is kind of good because there's no wind. So after getting my axes uh, tuned and the, uh, the timing correct, I just want to make sure that there is no other adjustments here. So here's 40. Hopefully that I don't have to do anything. Looks pretty solid to me. Oh yeah, just a hair left. I'm gonna shoot two more arrows to make sure. That is a dead deer on a de uh, elk. They're so much bigger. The target is, is just so much larger that you have a little bit of room for air, but that's not an excuse. Okay, that one's right on center, just a hair high, and that's me. That's a personal problem. Last arrow. Feeling good about this. I don't think I'm gonna have to make any adjustments. Done. First shot was the worst. I was off bull, still in vitals. Second shot. And then last shot. It's kind of leaning left, but not enough for me to make an adjustment. I think it was just me personally. So now we're gonna back up to 50, make sure our 50's on, and just keep moving. But I don't think we're gonna have to really do too much here. This is gonna take down an elk. Right through this door, by the way, is our shopping center at Guggen HQ. Pretty much from our shopping center all the way to the other end is exactly 50 yards. I think I'm at 49 right here, so if I back up one step, I'm going to be at 50. This is going to be my middle pin. That middle orange pin. I think it's just me, but we're going to go see how I did. I don't feel great. I felt a little shaky. That's where I really like a three pin, because there's just a lot more room between your pins. 
while you're looking. The reason I'm setting this bow up with the five pin is so I don't have to do any dialing, so I'll take it. Oh yeah, this is this is not, not a good group here. So that was my first shot. We did terrible. Second shot, and then the last one was bullseye. It seems like I get better on the third shot for some reason, but I'm not gonna adjust that. I, I, I can't even go off anything. I know the elevation is perfect, obviously, but it's not enough to go off left and right. I might shoot a few more times before I bump out to 60. It's raining, it's windy. This is not the best conditions for fine tuning the bow. If I can get my arrows to hit in the vitals on these targets we got, got out here at HQ, at 60, at 70, calling it good. 15 mile an hour winds, this is gonna do a lot to an arrow. I think that's a hard shot. That's vitals. Let me try one more. We got two front shots. It seems a little, seems a little left. I might have to tweak that pin just a little bit. I'm gonna do one more just to get a kind of group, especially because the wind is in my face. Shot that one low. That's okay. That's two. Almost hard shots. Let's back it up to 70. I'm okay with that. I might tweak it a hair, but I'm okay with it. That's a dead elk for sure. I have a little trouble getting my elk unstuck here. Oof, there it goes. And here's our other shot. So I'm aiming here and I'm hitting a little left. That was kind of consistent. So I'll bump that just a little over. So that means I need to pull my pin left, follow the arrow. But if that was on an elk, I mean, that is totally dead right there, so. 70 yards, it's kind of scary. What I'm gonna do here, just take this little Allen key, go right in this sight. I'm gonna push it to the left, just like Beyonce said. Looks like I already adjusted my 70 pin along the same line, so this should be, this should be good. Elk don't really string jump, so it's very possible to shoot them this far. I don't want to, but I definitely want to be prepared. It's a hair low. I think it's because the wind is pushing me. I'm gonna make a little adjustment here. Oh yeah, it's dead center. Let's do one more just for safety. in the neck dang it that was tough the wind was like kind of blowing me around and I did that thing that it's hard you just you try to squeeze it while you're uh, moving around the target so I made a bad shot shot him in the neck and we'll probably would have got away but one dead center shot so I feel pretty good about that if I have to shoot 70 better make sure the conditions are okay but I feel pretty comfortable say a pie plate it's a good diameter to be, be in if you're really shooting long range. But this is a whitetail size, so if you expanded this, elk would be, it'd be fine. But it just goes to show you, under the conditions, the wind, sure would like to be in that 30, 40 zone. <sighs> All right, y'all. I hope you've enjoyed today's video of looking at my new bow and going through some of the steps to get ready. Stay tuned for more. We're gonna be going over checking out maps. Uh, we're gonna be looking at the regulations and of course, just kind of getting a game plan together for actually going out and stalking these elk. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you on the next one.